Hi everyone, uh, Rodrigo again. I am I'm here to talk about the new features and roadmap of ZBus since the last session I did on Prague last year, right? And I, I am going to start with uh, why ZBus, right? Uh, we started ZBus in the past because one-to-one uh, -one communication is easy, right? We have a lot of uh, kernel objects or tools that enables us to make that kind of thing. But when to we start thinking in a more complex way, or uh, for example, one-to-many, we, we don't have so much option, options. And for example, here we just have mailbox and you need to do a lot of manual things there to make that work. So it's not easy to do that. And even if you think in a many-to-many -many, uh, communication topology, it's really hard to do. Even if you are thinking a two-way communication, for example, here we would have a lot of queues or FIFOs or something, right? It's not easy to do. So we, we, we brought the bus here. Uh, the bus enables us to make the threads talk, talk each other in one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many ways, right? And this is the current status of ZBus, right? Uh, uh, we, are, we have two kind of subscri subscribers and one, one, one kind of listener. We have two, two kinds of subscribers and the listeners. And now we can, we can uh, uh, publish two channels through uh, ISRs, right? Which is a uh, uh, good thing, a good thing. And one of the advantage of advantage of use ZBus is uh, the decoupling. When we have communications, we have the, uh, the uh, a coupling between uh, from from the producer to the consumer. In this case, we can think in three in three uh, more general couplings: a space when the producer need to know the consumer. Uh, the time when they need to work in the, at the same time to make the communication work, and the synchronization, which means that the, the consumer cannot do anything uh, other than uh, uh, wait for the communication or act during the communication, right? With ZBus, um, uh, mainly for the subscriber, subscribers, we have total decoupling. They don't, uh, the, the producer doesn't need to know the, the, sub, uh, the, the subscribers. They don't need the... They, it's not necessary to have the same uh, the, the communication at the same time, and then the subscribers can do a lot of different kind of things. They don't need to wait the communication to act. Okay, uh, for listeners, as we need speed and, and uh, we, we need to be more uh, fast. In fact, we we have just uh, just because uh, space decoupling is one of the most important ones because. The, the consumer, the listener, doesn't need to be uh, known by the, 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 the producer, but the, the listeners cannot uh, just run during the publication process and they cannot process other workload than the communication, right? So they are fast, but they have some limitations about that kind of thing, but it's, it's a trade-off. You need to pick up what, what you want. So uh, uh, the, uh, the contribution statistics from, from ZBus, I, I, I took some, I, I did a, a query there. And since last year, June, we had 28 pull requests. Uh, from, uh, from, uh, we have three from the community, other community members, and 25 from, from myself. And th thank you, <laughs> thank you the community for, for contributing and help. I, I would like to see more people involved on, on that, please. Uh, I, I, we, we have a lot of things to do, and I'm, I am only, uh, 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 in Portuguese I say, eu keep, it's my, uh, I only keep, I, I, team, I don't know. And uh, for that, um, uh, going on, uh, we have three core features. Uh, uh, during during those, the, this, this year, we have two, three core features that are interested to, to, interesting to tell you, okay? And other improvements, documentations. I, I, I did refactor the, the benchmark uh, 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 sample, which is a really big one, and you can do a lot of things there. I improved uh, some some C++ compatibility and fixed some from small minor issues and things like that. Okay, but we are we are going deep on the, 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 that, that three core features. So, uh, beginning with uh, uh, the observer storage. At the beginning, 
for example, here we have we have uh, uh, two subscribers and two listeners, and for that mm, that during during the the, the the channel definition, we would have a kind of list with a, a new ending list or array uh, of observers. And if you take uh, the, the 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 channel struct as a row on a, on a table, we would have this kind of thing here. We have one value for each column, but for observer, we would have a list, which is not a good uh, uh, way to organize data. And taking some some database or good practices, normal forms and things like that, I I, I separated them in a, a different uh, table or struct. So now we have just the the, the channel definition, and the, uh, we have a, 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 an object or a relationship called observation right now. The observation is just a reference to the channel and to the observer. And now we, we have an additional enable flag that, en that uh, enables us to, to make that uh, enable or disable individually, which is good and it gives us a lot of flexibilities. And the, the best part of it is that we can define uh, 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 observers, static observers, in different in, in separated files, in different files. Uh, before we just we could just uh, uh, have uh, static uh, observers during the definition time. So all the observers here w uh, would be static, and they they were part of that array there. But now we can use the the ZBus channel add observer to add that relation in a separated file. So here we are decoupling or making the space coupling less, uh, less coupled, in fact, with the channel. The, we are not talking about uh, consumer producers, but we are talking about channel observers. Now we can add observers without, uh, without intervenience of the, the, the channel, so which is good for modularity and, 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 and other or do things that make your code more separated, right? So we can have that kind of thing, and to, to make to make sure that the sequence of, of uh, 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 the, the delivery notification sequence was kept, I add a, a priority sequence here, a number here, which tells uh, a VDD, the Virtual Distributed Event Dispatcher, how to notify the the, the the, the observers, right? So here we have, for example, they, uh, the, the, the VDD will, try, will notify first L1, then S1, and then L2, and then S2, right? Because the numbers. We are increasing, it's not a, kind, it's not a priority manner in the opposite sign, right? We are using that in that direction. In, in this case here, if we use three for both of the, the, the observers, observations, we could have the same 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 result because we are using lexical order uh, 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 additionally to the, the to the number. Okay, so it's it's just a, a tip, but now we can uh, define a, a, a static uh, a observers uh, spread out. It's good, and you cannot. It's not necessary to rely on runtime observers using um, I don't know uh, heap and thing like that. Okay, for who for whom that are trying to use. Uh, Misra C or something, this is a really good thing to do. And another benefit for it is before we just have uh, the enablement on the observer, right? And now we can disable observations individually. So you can uh, even disable the, 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 the subscriber at all as, as a whole, or you can disable just one observation. Uh, it, it can be static or runtime or, or Runtime observer, both can be disabled on the fly, run in runtime, right? So you can do that in a more uh, granular way, which is good because you can kept, uh, you can keep your your uh, uh, subscriber enabled and just disable some channels, which you don't want to receive notifications at that time. So uh, uh, for that, we have uh, in summary, we have static observers in separated files. Individual masks, right, which is good, and a sequence priority to make the, 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 the notification sequence uh, as we want, okay? Master subscribers. Uh, the master subscribers were 
uh, requested since the beginning, and I was trying to, uh, to I was really thinking to, to add them, but I, I tried to find the best way to, to add them to, to Zbus. And in fact, uh, the message subscribers are subscribers that receive a copy of the message. Uh, before, we just have listeners and subscribers, right? The listeners were executed by the VDD, and during that execution, they could access directly the, mes the message without needing copy or something like that. They could access directly the message, which is good. And the subscriber will, uh, uh, only receives the notification of a changed channel, not the message, in fact. They should go get to the channel and, and retrieve the message to consume the message, in fact. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand the, the meaning of, of, of them, but they are really uh, complementary to the listeners. And now we have message subscribers. Uh, they, they, they receive a copy of the message. Okay, so during the VDD execution, the VDD will dis distribute some copy of the message to the message subscribers. Right, so you have listeners for fast, uh, subscribers for, uh, like say, let's say, soft notification, and message subscribers to hard notification with the, with the, the, the message at all. So uh, I, uh, we, we done that, we uh, rely on NetBuffer. NetBuffer is a really powerful uh, uh, tool. I, I, would, I would change the name to, from NetBuffer to Buffer to, to be more, I don't know, it's weird. I am using NetBuffer on, on Zbus, it's not Net, but it's really interesting. And I, 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 I showed that here just to, to mention that we use a pool of NetBuffers and the message subscribers has, uh, they, they, they have uh, uh, FIFOs, right? So we can uh, we can put some some net buffers on the FIFO, and then they can consume the, the messages. So uh, uh, the net buffer works with a kind of uh, uh, reference count. So uh, they uh, we can locate message on the heap and, and make them to take care of it. It's it's really interesting because we don't need to allocate that manually. So the process is we use a net buffer, we copy the message to the heap to keep the stage of the message because during the publication after after that, you can change the message and that message, the first message should uh, uh, should arrive on the, the message subscriber. And we, we do that for for the three, uh, three of them here, right? And then we send a, a reference of the net buffer to, to them. And when they, they receive the reference, they know where is the, the message. So they make a copy they unwrap the, 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 the net buffer, and the net buffer uh, remove the refer reference to the, 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 the heap allocated, right? And uh, put the net buffer on the available pool again. And you do that for all the, the, the mesh subscribers. But the, the, the latest one, uh, when we don't have any more references to it, the, the, the net buffer will delete the, the heap memory. So uh, the user doesn't need to know with that they just receive the message on the message subscriber. This is a kind of under the hood way to, to work and I'm going to show you. I, I was trying to, to be transparent or something. But also, uh, so uh, on that case, we, we have a copy of the message on all the message subscribers, okay? Um, some, some tips about uh, 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 message subscribers. We can also use uh, 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 static allocation for it if you want to avoid a uh, heap, you can do that, but you you make sure you, you must make sure that the, the message size that you are you are uh, uh, configuring there will fit uh, will enough to fit all the messages you, you are uh, uh, exchanging on that message subscriber. Uh, the, the uh, there is an assertion there that helps you if you enable asserts there, and you don't have enough room to 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 fit the message the, the assertion. assertion uh, error will rise to some problem and tell you you must use at least 20 bytes for the depth, for example. Uh, you, you must take care of the pool. Uh, we have just one pool for all the, the, the mass subscribers and, and channels. So it's, it's a really a, a global big pool and you, you, you need to take care of, 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 the, of that and make sure that you have enough, num uh, a, a big enough pool to make the your system communication 
to work without a lot of uh, failing, right? And uh, uh, another another tip here, uh, we, we we now have a different a different sub weight, right? We have Ziba's subscriber weight message. In that case, we we receive the the channel, but also the the message. And if you are observing two different uh, uh, different channels, you must be sure that the the this message can can, can, can is big enough to hold any of those. So using a union like this would be really easy and straightforward. You you it's not necessary to define manually the size of it, right? I I, I usually use that like this. So the, the the latest one and one of the most important is the highest locker priority protocol. With uh, with uh, uh, the advent of massive subscribers, we could face a lot of priority version problems, right? And if we take a look at that scenario here, we have uh, uh, one subscriber, two listeners, and two message subscribers, and one thread publishing to the channel. Uh, following that, sec that sequence here, and that priority uh, 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 configure here, we could see this kind of thing. Uh, if T1 tries to publish to channel A, we would have uh, 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 a channel lock, right? A copy of the message, and uh, 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 the, the listener one execution. That what what's good. But when we send a message, a copy of the message to MS1, the MS1, uh, the MS1 has more priority than T1, so it preempts T1, which is not good at all. And uh, MS1 runs and then get back. Uh, T1 get back to the to the the MCU. And sends sends a copy of the message to MS2 again, preempted, and then it will send a notification to S1, run uh, listener two, and then after that unlock the channel, and so S1 will take, or will read the channel and get the message. We we have three problems here. We have a priority version because S1 the the, the highest priority thread is the latest one to consume the message, which is not good. And we have two, uh, two, two preemptions, and we have a listener running after the, the observers, which is not good at all, right? So to solve that, we implemented uh, uh, a highest lock. So, so before we used uh, uh, mutex to that, but the priority inheritance was not helping in that case because MS1 and MS2 are not part of the mutex uh, uh, intended uh, queue, right? So they are out of that. So the 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 the, the parent entrance of mutex is not working was not working for that scenario, so I I, I remove mutexes and replace that with uh, uh, semaphores and implement a higher highest local priority protocol. Is an elevation uh, uh, algorithm uh, ele priority elevation algorithm algorithm that do thing like that. We have we have a critical resource. And for that critical resource, we have a ceiling priority value. It's not a priority ceiling, right? It's, uh, it's slightly different. Because the, the, the value is defined by all those tasks that, we, uh, that may request, not is requesting at that moment, right? So if we change critical for channel and task for observers, we, we can see that uh, the channel would have uh, ceiling priority with the highest observer priority, uh, so you could avoid a lot of a lot of those problems I, I, I've talked to you. So to define that, we have, for example, here we have S1, as uh, MS2 and MS1. MS1 has the highest priority here, so the ceiling priority of the channel would be one. So with that priority, T1 could publish to to channel A without priority inversions, without without uh, uh, Without uh, uh, inversions, uh, without preemptions, and no listeners after after observers, right? Or and sometimes uh, the S1 can be disabled or abort uh, the thread support or something. Uh, the the channel can be uh, the channel ceiling and uh, prior ceiling can be calculated again. And with in, in this guy in this case we have for example three and the channel will receive one and. That scenario becomes this one, which is uh, when, when, when T1 tries to publish to the channel, it, uh, the VDD we will elevate the T1's priority to a highest priority than S1, 
and everything goes really smooth, right? We don't have uh, we don't have priority inversions, preemptions, or anything, right? And after that, the highest priority thread will consume the data, you consume the message. So S1 is, is the first one to to uh, to to touch it, and then MS2 and then MS1, okay? So uh, uh, we have, we have uh, the HLP requires uh, a priority for the observers. And uh, until now, we didn't have this kind of thing. But to, to, to do this kind of uh, calculation, we need to attach the subscriber to a thread. So usually, we just use a subscriber on one, on one single thread. So we need to attach. We have the detach uh, uh, method uh, function as well. But uh, we need to attach. Uh, the, the, the subscriber to a, ch uh, a, a thread to make sure that the thread's priority is inherited by the, 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 the observer, okay? So in summary, we have short VDD execution. We have no priority versions. Uh, the listeners are always executed, always, uh, are usually executed before the, the subscribers, which is the in intention of it. And if, if, you, if you design the system to avoid inversions, we, you would not see a lot of overhead because you would not have elevations, which is good, right? But if you don't want to, to have the HLP uh, work on your code, you can disable that. It's a configuration uh, uh, that you can disable that. And you can use plain semaphores. But you, you must be aware that you face some prior inversions, preemptions, and so forth. And the, the, a good thing here that uh, several people <laughs> talked to me about that and asked that before, now we can publish two channels, Zbus channels from ISRs, which is good. But uh, we need to make sure that the listeners on that channel are not so uh, long or heavy because you would increase the ISR ratings, right? So make sure that, or or avoid listeners, or maybe you just use subscribers on that kind of channel. The, for example, you press a button, the button will publish to, to some channel. Maybe it's, it's good to have just subscribers there because you'd have a callback calling another callback and so forth, which is not good. And a, a, little, a little about future. Uh, uh, one, one of the things that I'm trying to, to do is to isolate some pool for for um, a critical part of the system. For, for example, you have some a portion of threads that talk each other they, that are more critical than other part of the system, and you want to be sure that always you have a, 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 a net buffer on the pool for that for that communication. So I, we we can separate that. It's not implemented yet, but I I think that would be there soon. And you can create uh, all or a, a, rip, a heap pool or a stack pool and put that separated. And you can share the same pool for, with some channels would be, would be good to make that more safe or more uh, critical uh, adjusted, okay? Another thing that I'm working uh, I'm, I'm, I'm helping the, the IoT applications from a team from Nordic to, to implement the mood core, mood core uh, Zbus, which is a really big challenge. Uh, this one is uh, when you have mood core, you'd have, a, 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 you'd have a channel on both cores, and you need to keep the state of that uh, consistent, right? Which, which is not so easy because you have, we, you have some some, you, 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 the, the other core should, uh, can, can be sleeping or you can have some RP message problem and everything else, okay? And for making that easier, we have two new things uh, adding to, uh, added to, to, to Zbus. We have, we have the, the, the notion, the concept of shadow channel. The shadow channel is, uh, uh, for example here, the payload one, is a kind of channel that it's, it's a read-only channel. You can only, uh, the, the, this core here just can read or receive some notification from the channel, but they can, that, in this core, we cannot publish to that channel. But on this core, we can publish on the, the actual channel, 
and all the things that happen to that channel will be reflected to the shadow channel. And we have a prox agent on, in, the, in the middle, right? They, they know how to talk each other to make that consistency happen. And, and uh, 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 if we take a look at that and change the, the, the medium here, we are talking about mood core, right? But if we change that for two MCUs talking tr through, for example, UART, you could have mood target, right? You just need to change the, the medium here, the agent talk, they know how to talk, but you just need to change the medium and you can have from, uh, you, you could have from mood core to mood target, which is really good. When you are thinking on, uh, for example, uh, embedded and host, you could have a Zbus on the host talking to a Zbus on the, the embedded device through a UART, for example, which is really good for simulation, for uh, testing and so forth, okay? And the latest talk, the latest, uh, latest topic is what I'm calling Z Zephyr Demons, right? This is a kind of, I don't know, it's a really long road, but I, 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 I could see a lot of things and I think that it's almost time to have demons on Zephyr, right? And I, I would, I don't know if everybody, I, I, I believe that everybody know, but uh, a daemon is a service that is running on the background to help other processes to work, in fact, right? So what, why doing this? Uh, we, we could do that with in a, using a, a common API, command response event, right? And with that, we, we would have a core for the daemon and an adapter. The adapter could be exchanged to talk to the driver. So we would have a daemon that we could, we could change the adapter to make that more flexible and we would have a piece of the application running properly and we can access that like a microservice, but it's not a microservice because it's a, th a threat, but we talk that, we, we, we can call that a daemon, right? Because it's not outside, it's inside and it's running to help us. And for example, uh, we could have this kind of scenario where we, we, we could have a daemon for MQTT, uh, a kind of DB or buttons, simple things that we still are programming this kind of things. We need, we still need to, to do code for buttons, for example, and, and other things like, for, for example, MQTT. If you take a look at the, the publisher sample, you, you'd have 500 lines, which is not Whoa, 500 lines for a sample to publish something on, on MQTT is too much, right? It would be easier because if you go to the, the desktop, for example, you have Mosquito Pub and you can do some, some I don't know, some uh, arguments there and okay, that's running. So on Zephyr, we have to do a lot of work and redo that every time. I, I think that all the companies are doing that almost the same thing repeatedly. So. I guess we can, it's not for everything, but we can find some parts of the code that we can put inside a kind of capsule and make that reusable for everybody. It's almost like that. And it would be like this, this one. Uh, we, could have, we could have a kind of configuration. We publish to a command uh, channel and we, ch we try to check that on a response channel and we could publish that just using a kind of struct and publish to the same command uh, a channel, right? So the command would be a uh, um, kind of union with some metadata and it would work. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we were uh, switching from two, 500 lines to some configurations and I don't know, a couple of lines, right? Uh, it's it's too uh, it's it's powerful, but it's too it's limited. But for the majority of the usage, it's it's the enough thing, right? Uh, I don't know how many companies are tweaking a lot about I don't know um, MQTT or, or common things, and maybe this is part of it. Okay. So and I I was planning I'm planning to make the the communication interfaces mapped on a kind of uh, interface definition language, like you know, ZCBOR, 
uh, CDDL or something, a proto buffer, to make that available to other languages as well. For example, we we see we see uh, uh, we see people talking about using Rust, Python, and Ray, Ray, I don't know how to say that. It's a, a Rust uh, virtual machine that can run that. And if we have a, a lot of demons defined in, internally, all the C part, all the uh, uh, driver part, the, the hard thing, the hard parts, that's that's already done on Zephyr would be encapsulated on a really well-defined API with a proto buffer, and the other side just need to access that that part. So, for example, an application in Rust could would not uh, would not be necessary to have, for example, uh, syscalls or a lot of detailed things there because you just need to use um, a Zbus well-defined API, and you could have just a wrapper on the Zbus and other small things on the, on the system to make that work. So I, I think that would it would help us to make a, a, a more, let's say, a more prepared for virtual machines or something like that, okay? So uh, for wrap map everything, we have two, three new features. The observer storage, right, we could do a lot of good things with, with that. A new kind of subscriber, and uh, a new priority elevation protocol, which took, took 90 days to, to get merged, a lot of things to, to, to be done um, at that time. And for now, we have the individual pools to make that. It's, it's a small a feature, not so hard to do. Uh, 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 Zbus Moodcore, which is a big deal, and Demons, it's a big, 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 big deal, <laughs> but it's a start, okay? And I, I, I'll open for questions and, okay. Thank you for the talk, Ziba is new to me, so, and I find that uh, all yeah, it's, it's working, it's working, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to... Uh, Testing? Okay, that's better. Uh, oh, that's good. That's A little better. Uh, my question's around the VDED okay. and uh, uh, why that runs from the publishing thread context uh, and if your idea of moving, of daemons um, could be applied to that to maybe move it outside that publishing thread context to get around some of the limitations on the listeners uh, 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 needing to use that uh, stack and uh, context. Okay, great question. Uh, 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 at first, we had a centralized VD, uh, event dispatcher, in fact. We, I, I call that virtual because it doesn't exist, in fact, because it's just a, a function call on the, 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 the publisher context. But it was to avoid uh, priority versions, in fact, because if you have a central entity publishing something, what is the proper priority for that? Because if you have a, a, a really, I don't know, low priority thread publishing to something that just low priority threads are involved you are using a high priority thread to make that. So you are avoid to, I don't know, highest priority thread to work because you're publishing something. So in that way, you could have more, more uh, different kind of context, talk context, talk context without interfering each other. High priority th threads talking each other without interfering in the low priority threads. And the scalability of that is, is, is really huge, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, any other questions? Oh. Hi, Rodrigo. Thanks for the presentation. I have a question around the channel definition. Um, when you're defining a channel, do you need to know at that time what are the number of observers and what are their types, or is that somewhat abstracted? It's it's it's, it's, uh, it's separated. It's it's a kind of uh, uh, when, when we define a channel, we have uh, a lot a, a kind of array defined, but in the implementation we have 
creation, uh, uh, separated object creations in a kind of list, but it's not, it's not on a single list. We are iterable sections for that, right? We have iterable sections and we can uh, link them one by one and, and it's, it's really easy to, to follow. Um, one of the things that uh, we'd be interested in having is the ability for the publisher to know how many subscribers it has so that it could potentially shut down and stop publishing if there are no subscribers. So for a more dynamic context, say you've got accelerometer data and you've got a task that's, you know, multiple tasks that suddenly, you know, have been scheduled to stop. So mm -hmm. therefore we want the device to go into a lower power mode and turn the accelerometer or stop the accelerometer data from continuing to, to publish that or, or even sample. Is that, what would you recommend as a mechanism for the publisher to be able to know how many sort of dynamic uh, subscribers there are? Mm, you, you need to know how many subscribers, the, the publisher would need to know how many subscribers it will affect. Well, well essentially like maybe an event or something like that to be able to notify that um, you know, the number of subscribers has changed and that number is now zero. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the principle is to, to make uh, that detached, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be not necessary, in fact. But you can, you can use, for example, user data pointer to add some metadata to the channel, it's possible. And you can, for example, uh, make some atomic there and where you have some observer, you can increment the, that count, and when you are not enabled, you can dec decrement that count. And you have also a validator function, which is run before the, the, the publication. So if you, you could have a kind of validation that tries to, to find out how many observers that function has. If zero, the, the, function, the, the validator would return false and the publication would not work, for example. It's, it's a way to go, but it will, uh, it will cause a error, mm. but you would not publish if you don't have any observers, right? Okay, yeah. Makes sense? We can yeah. shut more if you... If yeah, you I have to think want. about a little bit more whether that could be used to actually shut it down and then Are dynamically you? start it again, yeah. Okay, okay, we can. Another one. For multicore, how does the proxy differ to the daemon store you make, or is your proxy a daemon? Oh yes, maybe maybe maybe, maybe they are the first daemon, right? And I, I I don't know. Uh, they they are they are a separated thread to that need to work on, on in parallel with all the system, mm -hmm. but they are individual and they need to know other agents on the other cores. They need to to talk to discover something, and they need to have some information about the channels the shadow channels and something like that. And for example, when one core wakes up, the, the agent of that core should ask the other agents, oh, I have two shadows here. Um, what did, I don't know, did you change it, those shadows? Yes or not, you could uh, keep the consistency on, on yeah. that part. But yeah, the, the demons are a long journey. It's not for the 3.6 or 2.7, maybe four, I don't know. We, we need to discuss a, a lot more about that. Okay, thanks. Does anybody? Okay. Okay, in time. <laughs> Thank you.